Today's coverage of the 2017 yeah. Valley of the Sun Bowl is brought to you by Maricopa Community Colleges, where your education and success comes first. ASA College, excellent skills, exciting careers. Mesa Community College, declare success your major. It's all at MCC. Cox Communications, your friend in the digital age. And by MCTV, Maricopa College's television. We're plugged in to what's happening at your Maricopa College. Okay, we're back here from Mesa Community College in the Valley of the Sun Bowl alongside Joe Kirsting, Jeff Lowry, and a 12-7 lead for the Mesa Thunderbirds. Uh, this is a team that uh, was looking so good in the second quarter, but they lose a lot of momentum. We had two extra points blocked and then returned for a touchdown by ASA Brooklyn's Jeremy Webb. Well, very unusual plays. You, you rarely see blocked extra points, number one, but then to be scooped and scored twice in a row, and you're right, it just broke the back and the, the momentum that Mesa had. Now, fortunately for the Thunderbirds, they got a little momentum back at the end of the half when uh, the quarterback from uh, ASA fumbles the ball on his way into the end zone with seconds left, and, and they run out of time. Uh, it was a fluky play, uh, just unbelievable break for, for the Thunderbirds, but uh, expect a very chippy physical second half because as the two teams were going off the field they were definitely getting in each other's faces and uh, hopefully they'll settle down and play football this second half and we won't have any of that nonsense of personal foul penalties etc well probably the the star so far if you're gonna if you're going to individualize someone christian lopez the mesa quarterback he was very efficient 14 of 7 14 of 17 for 128 yards and threw for one touchdown. Well, he does a really nice job of getting the ball out of his hands quickly, and when he when he doesn't, he feels the rush and uh, is able to step up and, and do a few things with his legs and just uh, keep drives alive, and that's, that's what you ask a quarterback to do. If he's not a super athlete, you ask him to be athletic enough to be able to convert third downs and, and uh, when nobody's available down the field. All right, let's send it downstairs to Mike Caratanuto. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Yeah, here with Coach Coach Osfed and Coach. I'm an insane first half. I mean, have you ever been a part of a game where you get two blocked extra points turned for two points? I mean, that's a special team's boost. Yeah, I mean, it's good. We got to take advantage of that. I mean, it's a close game, and, you know, yeah, those are two great plays. We got to get better on offense. You know, that's got what's got to win us the football game. We're playing okay on defense, but we got we to gotta be able to do a better job on offense. So hopefully we can come out and do that in the second half. And Coach, real quick, I was going to say, offensively, it seems like your big line's starting to kind of wear on that defensive line. They've done it all year. I mean, we're going to see a little more running lanes open up in the second half? Yeah, I mean, the whole premise is we want to run the football. Well, we're going to take what the defense gives us. You know, they came out in an unconventional box early on, and, and, and we wanted to throw a little bit. Now the box is a little bit soft, so hopefully we can take advantage of that in the second half. All right, Coach, good luck all in the right, second half. Right. Again, you look at it, it's just absolutely insane. Like I said before the half, two blocked extra points, both – returned for two points by the same player. Coach, have you ever seen anything like that? Not seen anything like that, And uh, but, I, but I like what Coach Osavet just finished with there. It, it's his offense. His offense has been scoring at 40-plus you know, points a game, and, and they're, they've been held to three points by a Mesa defense that's been giving up 35 points a game. So he's disappointed right now with his offense, and they've got to finish drives. They've been moving the ball some, but they're not getting the key third-down conversions, and uh, – We'll see if they execute better here in this third quarter. All right, when we come back, we'll have the second half kickoff. It's the 37th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl on MCTV Sports. Drop that baby. <laughs> No. Okay, it's a 12-7 lead here for the host team, the Mesa Thunderbirds, as we welcome you back to John Riggs Stadium on a Chamber of Commerce Day. How many places in this country? Is it 84 degrees? 
on December 2nd, and it's just an absolutely gorgeous day. But you wonder what happened at the tail end of that first half when backup quarterback Alfonso Howard had a clear lane to the end zone, and five yards before he gets to the promised land, the ball just slips out of his hands. Yeah, that was a fluky deal, and from as far away as we were, you really couldn't tell if the ball maybe hit off his thigh or his, his, his uh, hip or whatever, but uh, a huge break for Mesa, and, and at this point, you know, the key is going to be, can this Mesa defense keep thwart, thwarting the drives of the Avengers? And if they can, uh, as good as Mesa's offense has been this whole season, uh, they got a great chance to pull, pull the upset here. Well, the Avengers are still waiting for the Hulk and Iron Man to get here to help their offense. But in the meantime, we are just a few moments away from the second half kickoff. And we'd like to tell you the leading tacklers in the game for the Brooklyn base team, the Avengers, Marquise Basmore. He had nine tackles, where's number 11 for them. And then there was three players with seven tackles for Mesa, including uh, Elmondo McCoy, also, number 10, uh, Sonny Fainau, and also Spreewell, the young man out of Centennial High School, who I thought may have been the defensive player of the first half for the Thunderbirds. He was in on a lot of plays. And I guess you could also give credit to the interception, the 74-yard interception return by Robinson in that first half for Mesa. Jordan Robinson, young man out of Mesquite High School in his sophomore year. Well, I didn't hear exactly what happened there, but there was a penalty at the end of the first half, and I believe it was against the Thunderbirds, an unsportsmanlike penalty. So uh, there's going to be a field position change on when this ball gets kicked off to start the second half. Well, Mike here, Tenuto, what do you got downstairs for us? Well, Jeff, I was snooping around a little bit, and, yeah, I guess there was some chip. Like I said, there was a little bit of chipping away at the banquet a few years ago, but by the locker room going in, and the unsportsmanlike was on Mesa. Coach Felker stating his case calmly about, you know, both teams going back and forth, but the unsportsmanlike is against Mesa. Coach, you did get that right, um, but it's for – they're saying at the end of the first half, I, get, I don't know if it was as they were walking to the locker room. That part I didn't get, but it, it did happen off the field. Okay. ASA got on the board first. All the scoring came in that second quarter. Uh, De Blasi with a 37-yard field goal gave ASA an early 3 to nothing lead. Then back-to-back -back touchdowns by Jackson and Lopez for Mesa. They go up. Uh, six to three and then 12 to five. Remember, we had the two blocked extra points and both were picked up by defensive sophomore defensive back Jeremy Webb, 6'3", 200 pounds. He's got four points in the game and that accounted for uh, the 12 to seven ball game that we have right now. So we're getting set to kick things off. Second half action here. The oldest continuous bowl game in the National Junior College Athletic Association. ASA will be kicking off from their own, well, from the 50-yard line. And the second half of this Valley of the Sun Bowl is underway. And Mesa will run it out. This is Banks. Banks slips a tackle near the 23, and he's off to the races. Up across midfield. He will be wrapped up right there on a very impressive 54-yard kick return and a touchdown-saving tackle by Javon Wright of the Avengers. Yeah, Javon Wright showed great speed and able to catch the return man and bring him down. And what an outstanding uh, job of the by the uh, special team, return team of Mesa. Hopefully now Mesa will play well the entire second half on their special teams. So Christian Lopez, very efficient in that first half. He threw for a touchdown. He ran one in for a touchdown. 128 yards passing. He was 14 of 17 attempts. And back into the ball game is T.J. Roberts, and he'll get the call here early on for a first down run. We'll take him down to about the 45-yard line and a gain of three. Uh, Mesa struggled to spring their great tailback, Roberts, in the first half, but they're, they're going to stick with it some here in the second half. they got to keep giving that young man the ball because uh, he's got a 6.8-yard average, and he didn't get that by uh, – 
by pure luck. He's got a good offensive line, but this defensive front for ASA is very formidable. 14.50 on the clock, third quarter action. Mesa with the ball, working from the ASA 45-yard line, and they fake the inside handoff, and they go to Sonny Richardson, who is the uh, leading receiver in the ball game in that first half. Richardson catching eight passes for 59. That's his ninth, but he only got one yard on the play to the 44 of ASA, and it's third down and six. 12-7 lead for Mesa. Christian Lopez, 6'1", 197-pound sophomore quarterback to throw, and he'll dump it off with the pocket closing in, and look at T.J. Roberts battling for the line to gain. He ends up with two, should have been hit, for maybe a negative yardage play, and it's fourth and four coming up for the Thunderbirds. The defensive end there, Stevens McKenzie, came off of his rush when the ball was thrown and did a great job pursuing to make that tackle to bring up fourth down and four. McKenzie and Johnson, two of the big studs on that defensive front wall along with a Fungo. Fourth down and four from the ASA right around the 41-yard line. Working out a shotgun, play clock down to five, play clock down to two, and they get this one off. Here's the snap, and Lopez looking, looks left, throws, fires right into the sun, and it's going to be caught at the 11-yard line on the far side by Dayton Jackson. That's the second great catch he's made here today. But this might be going against the offense on a pass interference possibly. Yeah, that was the back judge that just signaled that it was going to be against Mesa. Replay fourth down. Well, Jackson made a valiant effort at it, at it but uh, he obviously must have pushed off two flags on the play, so both the, uh, the uh, officials on the sideline and the back judge saw the same thing and called offensive pass interference, and now Mace is going to bring out their punting unit. So this is going to move the line of scrimmage all the way back to the Mace of 44-yard line. That was about a 50-yard penalty. You take away the catch. Ryan Grimm averaged 40 and a half yards per kick this year. And the Thunderbirds have to blow an early second half timeout with 12.42 on the clock. We'll take a timeout. This is the 37th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. Arizona, ramp up your career in technology industries with a degree or certificate through Maricopa Community Colleges. Industrial maintenance, automation, machining, and welding careers are in high demand and pay well. Go to rampupaz.com to find out how to get the career and paycheck you've always wanted. Start making up to $40,000 or more in as little as nine months. Be in demand, enroll now. Classes start soon at Maricopa Community Colleges. Visit rampupaz.com to learn more. Here at the 37th Annual Valley of the Sun Bowl, Mesa up 12-7. Let's send it back downstairs to Michael. Hey, thanks a lot, Jeff. Yeah, I see uh, Luke Loffenberg back here on the sidelines, but uh, he's got his cleat on his left foot, but he's wearing a sandal on his uh, right foot. Uh, they were icing it before he went in, so I'm guessing his return not happening in this game for Luke Loffenberg. And Jeff, real quick, that is the son, actually, yes, of old Dallas Cowboys quarterback, Babe Loffenberg, but he will not be back in the game. And what a punt by Ryan Grimm. They will down it at the seven yard line. And I don't think you can ask for any more than that. 49 yard punt, no return. Well, now it's up to the Thunderbird defense. We talked about that at halftime. They've had a tremendous first half holding the offense of the Avengers to three points, an offense that averages 43 uh, points a game. And uh, can they keep it up this second half? Uh, big challenge. And can they keep them down here to create field position for their offense? And Coach Osafet obviously was concerned about maybe his guys coming from a different climate and playing. You know, our temperature right now is 84 degrees, uh, very unseasonably warm as they come out running the ball, try to run it to the left side. And Mesa comes out playing tough. And Brant Casey, who had a great first quarter, 
Uh, comes up with a first tackle here for the Mesa defense in quarter number three. And Brent Casey is the son of Steve Casey, who used to be the coach at Arizona Western many years ago and is now the coach at uh, Sandra Day O'Connor High School in the North Valley. They lose two on the play. The quarterback back out there, Stone to the air. Now flushed out of the pocket in the end zone and throwing back against his body and completes it to Morgan. That's his favorite target. There is a flag on the play and Morgan's all the way up to about the 31 yard line. Morgan has not played a big role in their offense here in, at least through the first half, but a big play there, but there is a marker back down at the 20 yard line. Well, a tremendous job by Labana, which the quarterback of avoiding the rush. On the defense. Number three, that penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. And, that, and that's a huge job there by the offense of the Avengers to get out of the shadow of their own goal line and uh, goal post, excuse me, and get that ball to the 20. Oh, now they're on the 30 yard line. So it was a 25 yard pass play. Labanowitz to Morgan. ASA from Brooklyn trailing by five. Labanowitz dumps it off to his big tailback, Brink, and Brink taking on defenders and out of bounds somewhere near the ASA 40-yard line. Well, I'd like to see the numbers on Brink in the weight room. I bet you that man squats a lot of weight and uh, moves a lot of poundage on all the major lifts because he is a very, very physical running back. Now, we talked before the game off the air. Omar Grant, the tight end, he's in there right now, 45. With the offense not up to par so far in this Valley of the Sun Bowl, you wonder if he may have a chance to get a few catches here. Brink again, bouncing off defenders, finally settles at the 45, and that's a first down. Well, on that play, Number 45 was the lead blocker, Omar Grant, led up on an isolation on the linebacker, and they got a nice push and a, and a first down gain uh, for the Avengers. Giancarlo Valentin, 57, one of the guys in the trench warfare up front for this Avengers team. They trail by five. We're down to 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Left to play here. Andre Ridley and Foyance, a couple other great linemen. Well, a pancake block on the near side, but it doesn't matter because Mesa's Griffin Kemp comes out of nowhere and a negative yardage play. It's a quarterback sack. Well, that was a heck of a job by Griffin Kemp. He stayed with it. Labanowitz did not have his primary receiver that he was looking for. He tried to find a secondary receiver, and by that time, uh, Kemp was all over him. Did you see that pancake block on the bottom of the screen? That was pretty impressive. I, I you get a star if you get those. I know that for sure. <laughs> no doubt. 9.45 on the clock. We'll have to tell the folks what a pancake block is later. Labanowitz over the middle, and it's a late flag coming from the back judge. Looked like good defense by Jordan Robinson. He was all over Morgan, their leading receiver, over 800 yards catching this year. Well, it looked like Robinson might have made early contact. Pass interference, defense number three. It's an automatic first down at the spot of the foul. That's uh, Camp Pruitt. They, they've got the wrong number. Okay. They've got the wrong number. It was definitely Robinson that was in coverage on the receiver. And uh, it, it was a touch and go play, but uh, the back judge thought he saw contact with the, uh, probably with the off hand, the right hand, before uh, trying to swat that ball away. So now first down and 10. Looks like almost a little cover two coverage here by Mason. Now the quarterback runs out, dumps it off far side. Morgan, and Morgan, did he get the first down? He did, he's to the 40 yard line. Uh, some great improvisation there by uh, Labanowitz to uh, scramble and then keep his eyes up and find Morgan. And he just threw him a little basketball type pass and uh, able to complete it and uh, pick up a nice gain after the catch. They do not rule him out of bounds. It's a gain of 12 and from the 40 of Mesa, first down and 10. 
And we are going to get another Mesa timeout. That is their second timeout, timeout. already. Mesa. And we are only six minutes into the second half. With the score, Mesa 12, ASA College Brooklyn 7. I was living in a shelter juggling three jobs. I had to be resilient. That's something that you can't teach. Okay, a 12-7 lead for the host team, the Mesa Thunderbirds, led by Ryan Felker, defensive coordinator, Chanel Jones, Sean Gloden, Fletcher Jones, Alex Jacobson, Dan Reich, Brandon Bethel. Of course, John Mulhern, the athletic director over here of He's done a great job with this football program. Aaron Webster, special thanks to him for the sports information that he provided. Walter Cuff, special teams coordinator. A lot, big staff here for Felker as the big guy, Dante Thomas Williams, straight ahead. And we got an injured player on the field. So with 8.58 left to go here in the third, Mesa giving up some ground here on defense and will be facing a second and three when we come back. This is MC TV Sports. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Listen, I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. Welcome back to the 37th Annual Valley of the Sun Bowl game. Mike Caratanudo, Joe Kirsting, yours truly, Jeff Lowry, our entire MCTV crew. Second down and three from the Mesa 33. The team in red leads it by five. 8.52 left to go on the clock, and a slant run to the near side. Slips a tackle at the 30, and this is Williams heading inside the Mesa 10. And I'll tell you, when you got the bruising backs that this ASA team has, Alex Brink and Dante Thomas-Williams and that big line, that might be the most scariest thing that Ryan Felker's team is going to be facing here in the second half. So it's a first down all the way to the 9. 11th play of the drive that started all the way back at the seven, and the carry goes over the right side, and they didn't get much. It looks like Brant Casey, who was in on the tackle, grabbing that knee. He's shaking up a bit with 8.20 left to go in the third. Oh, and that'd be a big loss to lose Casey at this point, at any point in this game. He's been their leading tackler all season long, and he's the leader of that defense. In to replace Casey is number four, and that's Eric Marsh out of Desert Edge High School. And Joe uh, Casey out of Saguaro High School leading 21 to seven with five minutes left to go, and I'm sure the game is over. We're trying to get a score for everybody, but that would be Saguaro's fifth consecutive state championship. And what an incredible job they've done over there. 8.05 left to go, second down and goal. Now they send two men in motion, including Morgan to the near side. Let's see if he gets a one-on-one. -on -one. They screen it over the middle, and it's going to be caught. And the tight end is Corey Thomas. Touchdown and the, the lead, the second lead of the day for ASA 13-12. That was a heck of a call there by the uh, ASA offensive staff and Coach Osovet. They shifted out of a three-man backfield. They moved two of the backs to a slot to the right. 
he left the, the tight end, Thomas, uncovered, and the little play action brought up the linebackers, and Thomas was wide open in the end zone. That comes with seven minutes and 54 seconds left to play here in quarter number three. So the second, it is our uh, second lead change, and it's the second lead of the day for the Avengers, whose extra point is good by Gabe Gridley. And let's send it downstairs to Mike Caratanuto. Well, Jeff, thanks. Yeah, you were saying the Saguaro score. Actually, yes, I was going to say Brand Casey and Stone Matthews from last year's state championship team on this Mesa team, but the Sabercats did get their fifth, the first team ever in the state to do it, 28-7 to over South Point Catholic down at, uh, at U of A uh, Stadium. And actually, as I'm uh, standing right here, Jeff, giving this report, I see uh, – Brant Casey looks like he uh, cramped up a little bit, getting uh, stretched out by the trainer. And like you guys talked about, a little bit warm. And obviously cramps uh, could start to play an effect in this game. But, yeah, congratulations to Saguaro. Five in a row, guys. That is unbelievable. Well, more importantly, I'm glad to hear Casey has a cramping situation rather than a uh, joint situation, knee or ankle. So it looks like hopefully he's going to be okay and be able to bounce back and get back in this game. So seven minutes and 54 seconds left to go here in quarter number three. We await the ensuing kickoff. Andrew Banks on the left. Had a nice return last time he touched the ball. Let's see if they go to him. It's a short pooch kick that goes to the 22-yard line. And Banks again going to work. He's get hard at the 35. Able to bounce off of a defender, Suarez on the tackle on special teams. He got some help from right of ASA. And now you got, again, a little pushing and shoving going on after a 14-yard return by Banks. And he averages uh, pretty decent 28. Field, pretty decent field position here for Mesa. They got to see if they can get back on track with their offense. A tremendous 93-yard drive there by the Avengers from Brooklyn and uh, you know, we talked about it early. That offensive line is wearing down Mesa quite a bit, and uh, the run game is probably going to figure more and more prominently this second half if Mesa cannot start stopping the run. And do you think we'll see the backup quarterback for ASA, Alfonso Howard, after fumbling what should have been an easy touchdown for him at the very tail end of the first half? If you're putting me in it, the coaching position, I would say no. And here's TJ going to work, Roberts, and a big run. Nice job by the right side of that line. Luis Aguilar and Cameron Burgeon leading the charge, and it's a gain of eight. Yeah, that was a well-executed play by the Thunderbirds there. Nice reach block by the tight end as well as the right side of the offensive line to get to the edge of the defense. Second down and two, Lopez to throw, first down yardage, it's dropped. Incomplete, tried to hook up with Dayton Jackson, who's made a couple of fine catches in this game. And now the Thunderbirds are looking at a third down and two with 7.15 on the clock. You know, Jeff, we haven't had many drop balls here tonight or this afternoon. Uh, there's a lot of talented receivers out there, and that's very unusual for Jackson to lose the handle on that throw. Throwing into the sun. It's 14 to 12 in favor of the Avenging Avengers. And nothing doing there, and I'll tell you, that's a fine job. Good containment. Give Demetrius Powell. He may not get credited for the tackle, but he was the one that thwarted that play, number 34 for the Avengers. That was a great reaction by Powell. He definitely was the key guy to, to defense that play. And now so they're going they, for it. And there's 12 men on the field. Now, remember, Mesa has already used two of their three timeouts here in the second half. Now there's three flags on the field. Both of the linesmen threw the flag and the uh, field judge on the foul. Wow. The first charge timeout of the second half. So we got a timeout on the field, 14 to 12, visiting Avengers lead it over Mesa on MCTV Sports. We were one of the first colleges in the Southwest to offer evening and weekend classes in small business management because we understand it can be hard pursuing that dream business idea during regular business hours. Let us help you get started with yours because at Glendale Community College, we believe it's never too late. So as you can see, our sales are improving, but we can do better. Or too early to pursue your dreams.
Okay, 6.50 left to go here, and a 14-12 lead for the ASA College Avengers out of Brooklyn, New York. Now, this is a big play in the game. Mesa's lost some momentum here in the third quarter. 6.50 left to play here. And now in punt formation on a fourth and two. Now, before the timeout, and it was an ASA timeout, they were lined up to go for it. And now they got their punting unit in there in Ryan Grimm. And more confusion from the Mesa special team unit. One of their players not out on the field. And he gets a booming kick here. It's going to be fielded back at the 13-yard line. And can they make the stop? The special teams of Mesa swarming all over. That was Bryce Berletic. Young man out of Highland High School on the tackle at the 18. Only a five-yard return, so pretty good there. Well, Jeff, there's a lot of time left in this football game with 6.36 left to go in the third. But if there's a key possession to me, it's this possession for the Mesa defense. You know, they, they, they uh, showed some susceptibility on that last drive. And uh, we'll see if they can stiffen up get a stop or a takeaway to get their offense back on the field. And give some credit to Ryan Grimm. He flips the field here for Mesa with a, a fine 42-yard punt and outstanding special teams coverage by Mesa. So Labanowitz is back at quarterback. He runs one way, now flushed out the left side, looking. He's going to have to take off with it as he dives to about the 22-yard line. So pretty good pursuit on that far side by the Mesa defense. Fainal, Aberdeen Fainal, only 360 pounds out of Hawaii. Well, you got to be impressed with Labanowitz. He's a, he's a slippery guy, you know. Yeah. It's hard to get a clean hit on him, and, uh, you know, he made a, a big loss into a three-yard game. Second down and seven, run it to the left side. Brink and Brink. Powers his way across the 35 to the 37-yard line. 16-yard run. He lost his helmet, so he's going to have to sit out of play. Both players lowered their shoulder on that one, and, boy, there was quite a contact on that far sideline between Brink and the defensive back for Mesa, Jordan Robinson. Jordan Robinson, who had the big interception back in the second quarter that led to a Mesa score. First down and 10. Well, they're moving the ball, this Avengers team. And just as I say that, the big stop, Eric Marsh. 6'2", 237 out of Desert Edge in Goodyear, Arizona. One of the top lower level uh, football programs over the past couple of years. Well, the good news for Mesa in terms of the injury front uh, Brant Casey is back on the field, and that, that's uh, outstanding for that young man and for the Mesa defense because he's been uh, a prevalent player all game long and all season long for the Thunderbird defense. 14-12 to 12 is the score. ASA on top. The White Tops, Mesa in their home red. Second and 12. Tried to run an, an option, and now it's the option keep around the left side. And Lebanowitz dives to about the 46-yard line. They're going to mark him down at the 45 and a gain of nine. Another example there, Jeff, of a broken play for the, th for the Avengers. And Lebanowitz, with his niftiness and headiness, is able to pick up an eight-yard gain. So it's third down and two. Out of the shotgun. If you're wondering how big Lebanowitz is 5'11", 180, give it to Williams around the left side. Not a big gainer, but it's enough for the first down. Looked like Cam Pruitt got some help with Will Jackson on the tackle over there. Got some pretty good-sized defensive backs on this Mesa team. Jackson coming in at 6'4", 200, and Pruitt 6'1", 190. Mesa's rotating in some fresh players in that defensive front. They're, they're feeling the, uh, the, the wear and tear from that offensive line. This has been a two-and-a-half-minute drive, and wide open is Williams out of the backfield, and he's all the way down close to the 25-yard line tackle by Pruitt, 
And you get the feeling like Coach Kirsting has repeatedly said that Mesa's defense may be tiring. A really great protection that time. And the, that was a running back out of the backfield run on the wheel route up the sideline, and there was no Thunderbird defender with him. So it's first and 10. Keep it on the ground, and the Mesa defense rising to the occasion. Sonny Fainal, 6'5", 260-pounder out of Salt Lake City, Utah, and he got in there and laid the thunder. And Fainal hit the gap on that one and hit the running back just as he got the ball, and that was fortunate for the Avengers that he didn't fumble that as hard as Sonny hit him in the backfield. 260 pound down lineman, six foot five. Now you got trips outside the numbers, and the throw is going to Morgan, who came out of it and makes the catch. He'll get it maybe back to the, the original line of scrimmage. It'll be a gain of, let's call it four. And now a third and nine coming up for ASA. You know, you know, Morgan keeps that ball to the outside. He had two wide receivers blocking the corner, and he stay up the sideline. He could have had a big gainer on that, maybe broke it to the end zone. Two minutes and 35 seconds left to play here in the third. The Banowitz has a wide open receiver and the back shoulder catch. A tremendous play. And that's Angel Suarez, and he's inside the five. Well, great job here by ASA College coming out in a quads formation, back-to-back -back plays. The first time they threw the ball to the, uh, to the screen man, Morgan, and this second time they faked it and throw it to uh, a wide receiver up the sideline, number 87, Suarez, and they're down inside the five. That play goes 22 yards. It's a first down, 213 on the clock. ASA trying to own their largest lead of the game, and the ball comes loose. There's a scrum for it. Now we await the call. This is a big play in the game. And boy, Mesa would have loved to have recovered that one. It looked like it might have been recovered by ASA's Jordan Velez, the 330-pounder out of New Jersey. Well, the Avengers put in their goal line offense, and featured in the goal line offense is Alfonso Howard, and he's the quarterback in there right now. 12th play of the drive. This drive started back at the ASA 18-yard line. Howard is back into the ball game and running very carelessly with it, but then the second effort, did he get in? And he did not. He did not make it. And they recover the ball. 43 comes out of it. That's Toki. What a play by the Mesa Thunderbirds. And the second time in a row, Howard has coughed it up. And coach, you were exactly right, not wanting to go back to the young man, not to pick on him too much. Well, there's a lot of pressure in these bowl games, Jeff, and you, and you got to go with the guy that brought you and, and has been your main man all year long. I, I just thought it wasn't good strategy at this point in the game. Let's send it downstairs. Is it Mike Caratanuto. Jeff, that ball was, real quick, an inch away. I'm not kidding you. It was right down the goal line from being a touchdown. I mean, literally, game of millimeters, guys. That's how close that was. But it was a huge hit and recovery by Mesa. Over the goal line? I, I couldn't tell from up here. Uh, oh, no. It was it, close. It, coach, it was close. I mean, literally, I mean, m millimeters. Not even inches. Millimeters. And that hit uh, caused the fumble. The ball, he was trying to stick the ball out just a little too early. Out of the shotgun, and Lopez over the middle. And wide open is McCarthy. Up across midfield, he's gonna be tracked down from behind, and he's gonna be all the way down to the ASA 25. What a turn of events in this game with 48 seconds to go in the third. Jeff, can you say momentum? My, my, my. Mesa looks like they're going to get scored upon. They cause the fumble. They get the big play on the second down play, and now they got a chance to go ahead. McCarthy, again, listed as a wide receiver, built like a tight end, goes 72 yards. 
And what a big, big play for Mesa. They forced the fumble. Howard on that fumble play, and I think I said as the ball was snapped, he was running kind of carelessly with it, and then the ball came loose. And now a complete turnaround, but Mesa needs a score here. First down and 10 from the 25, and they go to their well, and that's T.J. Roberts. He's still on his feet. He's churning the legs, and he's down to the 10, and he's got a first down for the Thunderbirds. That was a really nice design play there by Mesa. They put the slot receiver uh, number one in motion, Richardson, to lead on the sweep, and they gave the ball to their great running back, Roberts, and he followed the block and cut off the block. Right there, you can see he's cutting back against the green and able to pick up that first down just inside the tent. Over 1,100 yards on the ground this season. A great fake there. Quick option and the take by the quarterback, Christian Lopez, and he gets his team down. Looks like right around the seven-yard line, second down and goal coming up. And that is the end of quarter number three with the score. ASA from Brooklyn, New York, 14, Mesa 12. This is the 37th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. 14 to 12 is the score, but Mesa knocking on the door. They have it second and goal from the Avengers seven yard line, along with Mike Caratanudo, Joe Kirsting, our entire crew, Jeff Lowry from John Briggs Stadium on the campus of Mesa Community College. And Lopez comes out throwing, and it's complete and into the end zone for the touchdown is Jackson. And now they're going to say no. His knee was down before. The the ball broke the plane of the end zone. I don't know about that. Uh, the they got a better judge, view of it than we do. Yeah, the line judge was standing right on the goal line, and he's the one that made the call. So it's inside the one for sure as we have a third and goal. I don't know. That replay looked like he made it. So now third and goal from just outside the line. And Lopez around the right edge gets the touchdown nonetheless. His second rushing touchdown, and what a way to start the fourth quarter for Mesa. They lead at 18 to 14 with 14.37 left to play here in regulation. Well, I'll tell you what, that key play at the end of the half to change the momentum uh, with the fumble and then the long pass to the, to the tight end, to the H-back, number 87, McCarthy, and this has given the Thunderbirds the lead, and now they're going to go for two, and I wouldn't be surprised if they go for two the rest of the game, Jeff Lowry. Well, earlier in the first half, Mesa had scored two touchdowns in the second quarter, and both extra points were returned by Jeremy Webb for a two-point play for ASA. Now, Lopez flushed out of the pocket, running right. He pump fakes. He rifles one into the end zone. Touchdown, Terrence Roberts. And a two-point play. Extends the lead to 20 to 14. Boy, I'll tell you what, you talk about extending a play with your legs, and you couldn't have done it any better than that. A little pump fake there helped him out as well after he made the first man miss. He gave a little pump fake. The defender kind of stalled out, hesitated his feet, and that gave him enough time to hit Roberts in the corner of the end zone. Roberts was covered very well initially yeah. on that play, but he kept alive and kept moving with the quarterback, Lopez, and Lopez found him for the two-point. So the momentum has swung back. You felt like ASA had owned that third quarter, even though they had the fumble. 
at the end of the first half. But then another Howard fumble, once again inside the 10-yard line. That time it was at the three. And I'll tell you what, if ASA comes out of this game, they win this game, Howard should pay, <laughs> get, take everybody out for dinner uh, when they get back to Brooklyn. Well, now the key is field position. The kickoff coverage has not been real strong. This is one of the better kicks they've had of the day. See how they do. Here's Morgan from his own four-yard line up to the 15, the 20, the 25, and he's off to the races. Well, there goes the momentum as he just went 98 yards to pay dirt on a kick return touchdown. And just like that, we are tied at 20 apiece. Well, you knew that they had dangerous return men. Uh, Morgan has been their big play receiver and leading uh, receiver all season long. And uh, they kicked it off deep to him and the poor, poor coverage. A great job by, by uh, Avengers of getting a nice seam in the middle. Mm -hmm. They cross-blocked it really well. And uh, Morgan found that seam, and he was gone. Well, I'll tell you, this is a young man that will be playing at the next level. I mean, his speed is, is incredible. Alessandro De Blasi in to attempt the point after. Deep Ridley to hold. So De Blasi in for the extra point. This is to give ASA what would be their third lead of the contest. It is good. And with 14-22, it's 21-20 in favor of the visiting Avengers. And let's send it back downstairs to Mike Caratanuto. Hey, Jeff, thanks a lot. You talk about Edward Morgan. This redshirt freshman led the team in all-purpose yards, 944 all-purpose yards, 104 a game. But he led the team because of the kick returns, Jeff, as we just saw right there. Gets the blocks, a huge return he had. Only it said three returns. I don't think a lot of teams kicked to him because they knew. But for 130 yards and a return touchdown. And again, special teams, the hugest X factor. And uh, I know it's probably driving you a little bit crazy, Coach, because I know for Mesa they've played, uh, they played better special teams than this all season long. Well, one of the things you, that I've learned about special teams, and I just learned this last year coaching at Arizona Christian University, uh, one of our other assistant coaches over there, Steph Crux, said, you know, Joe, one of the things you can tell about the athleticism of a team is how they cover kicks and how they return kicks. And you can see here tonight, this afternoon, that these Avengers have great ability to get on people and block them and break those big long runs on the return game. Okay, so the Avengers kicking off now. I thought... Well, we'll talk about that last kickoff here in a moment. This is going to be, well, I thought it was a fair catch. The officials did not grant Cortland Brooks. And now a late flag is coming in. I don't know what this is about. I think some of the players have a little extracurricular activity over there again. We've had a couple of pushing and shoving going on. We had a little slight little incident before the game. So the officials are going to sort this out. The Avengers lead the Thunderbirds 21 to 20. We're in the fourth quarter. Conduct number 88 of the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. First down Mesa. Actually, that was Bryce Hampton that thought he called a fair catch and was not granted the fair catch. And then everybody kind of just stood around. He was lucky he didn't get tackled hard on that play. Yeah, if he if he weighed fair catch, he did it very early on, and I and I missed it, and I think all the officials missed it, but uh, I don't know. I really don't know if he made the signal or not, but I, the penalty, I'm sure, was for his behavior after the play was over, not for the fair catch call. Well, the last time Mesa had the ball, they go seven plays, 98 yards. This is their fourth possession of the second half. Please reset the game clock to 14 minutes, 22 seconds. 14.22. So 14 minutes and 22 seconds. It has taken us about 15 minutes to play the last uh, 15 seconds or so. So the ball is now going to be placed all the way back at the Mesa 11-yard line as they trail by one. The two extra point blocks that were run back 
have been the difference in this game. And the handoff straight ahead, nothing doing there. Phenomenal defense by ASA, and it was Jameek Murphy, a 6'1", 270-pounder out of Staten Island, New York. Yeah, Murphy's a non-starter, but boy, he uh, really made his force felt on that play. So from the nine, second down and 13. Lopez, who has run for two, he has passed for one, and the throw is somehow completed. Downfield to Jawan Johnson. Jawan Johnson. Man, penalty marker is down at the 15. How did he slice those defenders and get that in there? More on the nine. One nine. Ineligible player downfield on the offense, number 65. Half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. That's the left guard, Brad Cleach. Cleach. You know, Jeff, I'm surprised that penalty isn't called more often as, mm -hmm. as much as these people run and run the RPO offense where they fake the run because the offensive linemen are blocking a running play. And if they keep blocking and get down the field and the quarterback keeps it and throws it, you're going to get ineligibles. Mason needing a big play and the throw, one-on-one -on -one coverage incomplete. I don't think there should be a flag there. The ball was slightly underthrown, and the receiver really did not have much of a chance, not that that has anything to do with it. And Dayton Jackson is absolutely barking at the officials here, wanting a pass interference goal. Well, he better keep his mouth shut, or he's going to give himself another personal foul penalty here. But Jackson, it looked like to me, didn't keep running in full stride. It looked like he started slowing down and misjudged the depth of that football. Big third down and 18 here for the Avenger defense. If they can get a stop here, they can flip the field for their offense and put themselves up by two scores possibly. Okay, third down, 16. And Lopez again rolling out to his right. Now steps up, good protection. Now it caves in and he throws an interception at the 18 yard line. Campbell's got it to the five into the end zone for a touchdown. Boy, an ill-advised pass by Christian Lopez, a, a ball that he probably should have thrown in the turf here at Mesa Community College. There's a flag on the play, though, Jeff. There was a, a block far away, removed from the play. That's going to be the call here, and this uh, touchdown may get called back. You'll see it near the end of the play. Number 65 for Mesa gets hit right about the three-yard line, right about okay. there, and... Just as he was crossing the goal line, that hit was made. And so it's going to be interesting to see what the call is. If they give him the score and the penalty comes afterwards, or if they call it in play as the return was going on. 13-22 on the clock. Fourth quarter action. You're watching the 37th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl on MCTV Sports. Our entire crew doing a fine job here today. A special thanks to each and every one of you along with the Hall of Famer and former national championship coach, Joe Kirsting, Mike Caratanudo. The result of the play was an interception. After the interception, there were two fouls by the defense. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 79. Sideline interference on the ASA bench. Both pennies will be enforced, 30 yards. It's gonna be first down, ASA. So it negates the touchdown. The interception stands. That's the first interception thrown by the Mesa Thunderbirds. And what a tremendous break wow. for Mesa Community College. You negate the touchdown and you lose 35 yards in field position. That ball's now gonna be at the 37 or 30 yard field position, excuse me, instead of the seven yard line at worst. And now can Mesa step it up and make a stop. They haven't been doing as well defensively this second half, uh, but we'll see how they can do and see if they can slow down Labanowitz and this powerful, explosive Avenger offense. Well, the freshman quarterback is back out there, though, in the first half. He was sharing time with Alfonso Howard, the freshman. And now from the 37, first down and 10, they'll set up a screen to the near side, and Mesa was all over it, and led by Brant Casey, who has been one of the true standouts here today for the Mesa Thunderbirds on defense, number 20. 
Got it out to Dante Thomas Williams, a 6'1", 210 pound. We're inside of 13 minutes left to play here in regulation time. 21-20 ASA leading it over the host team in this Valley of the Sun Bowl. To the air, second down and nine. Nearly picked off on the far side. It's incomplete, third down and nine coming up. Uh, nice job there by the secondary of Mesa, staying in deep coverage. They were trying to get the ball down the field, and then Labanowitz had to go for his underneath receiver on the drag route, number 18, Gill, and he threw it a little high and a little too hard for that short throw to Gill, and that's going to bring up a third and nine and going in their empty formation again. Giancarlo Valentin, Thomas Lopez, two of the outstanding offensive linemen here. And a quick pass over the middle, and it was thwarted immediately. Cam Pruitt with the immediate tackle of Morgan. And decision time here for ASA. They were lucky they were not called for an illegal man downfield. Well, that was a little inside screen, and as long as he catches that ball behind the line of scrimmage, the lineman can move down the field. I couldn't tell from our angle if he had crossed the line or not. But you got to really be impressed with Pruitt doing a great job staying in tight coverage on the screen receiver and stuffing that play. Thomas Lopez, the left tackle or left guard, he was like at the 29-yard line, and the ball was still in the quarterback's hands. So fourth down, high snap, corralled nicely by Gridley, and he gets this kick off. It's not a pretty kick, but it's going to roll all the way down to the 10-yard line. So a 27-yard punt, but he pins them down to the 10, and you can't ask for more than that from your punter. So with 11.45 left to go, you're watching the Valley of the Sun Bowl on MC TV Sports. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Lowry with MC TV Sports. Join me along with Hall of Fame coach Joe Kirsten as we bring you full game coverage of Maricopa football. Mesa, Scottsdale, Glendale, and Phoenix. I will bring you the play-by-play -play action, and with each down, Coach Kirsting analyzes the pass, the run, and how the defense was able to keep the chains from moving. Catch all the action right here with MC TV Sports. Well, we're back here at the 37th Annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. That guy talks a lot, you know it? <laughs> He's good at it. <laughs> Well, I think you saw, most of you watching, uh, you saw the incomplete pass. It's uh, going to bring up a second down, second down and 10 here for the Mesa Thunderbirds. Starting from their own 10-yard line, trailing by one. Lopez has had a very efficient game here as he's going to be wrapped up on the outside, and that's Brian Campbell, 190-pounder out of Baltimore, Maryland, with a fine play. Lopez just has not had any breathing room when he's trying to break out and use his legs to extend plays. Well, they've done a much better job on him this second half. They've contained him well, and they've stayed at home on the run pass options, and that's what happened that particular play with Campbell making that open field tackle. So no gain on the play. Outstanding job by number four. Playing that free safety position for this ASA team, and now one-on-one -on -one coverage to the far side, incomplete. And right now, Lopez, well, we got a penalty marker back in the, well, would be kind of in the area of holding, but let's, let's get the call. Thank you. And Lopez, the quarterback, is clapping his hands. No foul. Face mask defense, number 90. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, a huge break there for Mesa because they were getting ready to punt out of their own end zone. Well, the last uh, about four, three, four minutes of play in this football game, the Thunderbirds have been very, very fortunate, and the uh, team from New York's been a little undisciplined, and that's caused them to uh, have to stay out there on defense. First down and 10, they come out throwing the ball, tried to hook up with McCarthy, who had that huge 72-yard pass reception that eventually set up a touchdown run by Lopez that gave Mesa a 20 to 14 lead. I don't know if I, I can remember doing a Valley of the Sun Bowl game where you've seen these drastic uh, change in momentum. It's been huge today, no doubt. And right now, there's just not much tempo to Mesa's offense, so they got to try to find their tempo and get back going. 
So second down and 10 after the incomplete pass. They go back to TJ. TJ running left, up across the 30, up across the 40, and down to the 43-yard line where he's brought down by Timberlake, but not before a fresh set of downs for the Mesa Thunderbirds. Well, that's that same play they ran earlier in the third quarter where they put Richardson, the slot receiver, in motion. He becomes the lead blocker on the sweep. Now out of the no huddle offense after an 18 yard pickup by Roberts, he's back to work and up close to the 48 yard line of five yard pickup for second down and five. flag right at the end of the play thrown by the head linesman on that far sideline. But one, one of the things that I'm impressed with with Coach Felker is showing patience today. And he's staying with his, his tailback who uh, has been a key player for them all season long. And uh, he's not going to go away from the run game until he absolutely has to. Well, he's going with the same offensive line that he came out with, with the exception of Riley Matheny, uh, Matheny is now After in there. That play over, personal foul, defense, number 92. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, I'll tell you what, 10-28 left to go, Mesa Somebody, those football gods are loving them. That's two costly penalties against ASA on this drive alone to keep it going. And now they're inside the 40, and they're going to mark the ball right at the 37-yard line. And a fresh set of downs for Ryan Felker's team. Out of the shotgun, they run the counter, quick counter left, and TJ is going to dance his way up to the four. And I'll tell you, the one thing you love about this coach is the fact that they are eating up a little time. This has been a nice sustained, well, not a long sustained drive. They've eaten up uh, close to two minutes now, but with this hurry up offense, but got to keep that defense off the field as long as you can because they have shown signs of tiring. TJ going back to work. He runs it to the left side, and he's going to be stood up at the 32-yard line and brought down by their leading tackler, Baysmore, who is shaken up on the play. Oh, that's going to be... Uh... A bad, bad injury if they lose Baysmore. He has been outstanding all game long. I did not see what happened on the play. Uh, the trainer looks like he's looking at his lower body on the right leg, it, it appears. And they told him to stay down for right now. And that's that's good job by the trainers to make sure that this young man can uh, it up okay. All right, with 9.49 left to play here in regulation time, you're watching the 37th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. Hey everyone, I'm Mike Caratanuto with MCTV Sports, and I'm back for another exciting season of Maricopa Gridiron. Tune in every week to see game highlights and the final scores for Mesa, Scottsdale, Glendale, and Phoenix College. From the season opening kickoff to the final seconds of the Valley of the Sun Bowl, we'll have the best plays right from the sideline. Don't miss the action all season long with Maricopa Gridiron on MCTV Sports. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. So ASA, the defense, have committed a couple of costly 15-yard penalties, two, in fact, on this drive alone, and it's kept things going for Mesa. But now the Thunderbirds are looking at a third down and four from the ASA 31-yard line. Mesa in the red, trailing by a score of 21 to 20. We've had three lead changes in this game. Handoff running straight ahead. And really stepping up on this drive has been T.J. Roberts, the 5'11", 208-pound sophomore. You know, Jeff, we've talked about how the ASA offensive line has worn down the Mesa defense. I think we're getting a little reverse of that going uh, for this Mesa offensive line. They averaged 312 across the board, and they're uh, coming off the ball pretty well now. And as I just mentioned before the break, that uh, four of the five starters are still in there on the offensive line. Quick pass near side, Richardson with his 10th pass reception of the day. Coming up on 70 yards receiving, and that is going to 
give them about a seven yard pickup. Looks like they're marking the ball down around the 18. That was an incredible catch. That ball was down by his ankles and he was able to catch it, put it away and gain yards after the catch. Nine yard pickup and here is Roberts again around the left edge. He can smell the end zone, but he's gonna be about a yard or two shy, but there is a penalty marker back at the 16. That was a second and one play. Well, that's the play they've had the most success with this afternoon, and it's just a basic sweep play, and I think we're gonna get a hold probably on one of the receivers. Look like maybe oh. Richardson. 10 yard penalty, replay first down. Yeah, we weren't able to get the number on who held there, but uh, definitely was holding. I'm pretty sure it was on one of the wide receivers to, to spring Roberts around that left end. We're approaching the nine minute mark here in quarter number four on a beautiful day, 84 degrees on this December 2nd. The Valley of the Sun, the Mesa Thunderbirds making their ninth appearance. Trying to get that break even win. They are four and four in the Valley of the Sun. They have won two national championships going back to 1973 and 75. Richardson's 11th catch of the day, dances at the 20, inside the 15 and out of bounds near the 10. That'll bring up a first down as he is brought down. Well, good sign that Baysmore is still in there. Uh, he was on the tackle along with Dixon for ASA. Uh, and they're going to hurry up. Great job by Dayton Jackson blocking on the perimeter as well as uh, Miles Kelly. And Roberts gets uh, kind of clothesline there. A scene out of the longest yard with Burt Reynolds, no call. Well, there is a flag down, but I don't think it has anything to do with the run on Roberts. It look, and Roberts has got his hands on his knees. I mean, he got clothesline good. And Michael Young, the offensive lineman, also shaking up on the play. Illegal play. substitution, defense, 12 players in formation. Five yard penalty, still first down. Uh, if you're, so if you're coach Osavet, you got to be really disappointed mm -hmm. with your team this fourth quarter. That's the third penalty on this drive. Yep. Uh, just a lack, a lack of discipline here late in the game. So the ball resting at the seven. The line to gain is the three. And again, Roberts getting the call, the big workhorse. Double-digit tackles for Marquise Baysmore. The linebacker out of Washington, D.C., and they didn't get much on that play. Gain of one. Yeah, that's a that sweet play again, and a nice job there by Bazemore. He read that right off the right off the get-go and uh, hit him for no gain. Keep it on the ground, and ASA kind of wising up on this run defense. Bazemore again with O'Neal making the tackle, and we got to stop in play. with a third and five coming up here for the Mesa Thunderbirds. Again, the line to gain would be the three yard line of the Avengers with 740 on the clock. So a big play in this game. Certainly the game isn't on the line here, but a big play here for Mesa. And they're still well within field goal range so they can't take a loss. They come out throwing and I'll tell you what, the crowd wanted pass interference Jeremy Webb was all over the intended receiver, Dayton Jackson. And I wonder, do you, well, are you going to bring in Aaron Eros, who's had two extra points blocked in this game? Well, and I was thinking the same thing, Jeff Lowry. This has been the uh, most successful play for the defense of the Avengers when yes. they line up in extra point field goal formation. They're averaging uh, two points per attempt. Well, Aaron has missed one field goal and has had two extra points blocked. This is for the lead with 7.27. We're going to stop and play and a timeout. Or is this a delay of game? Well, yep. Offense. That really doesn't penalty, hurt the cause. So a delay of game against Mesa. We do have a correction. Mike, Mike here to was right. I guess one of those timeouts that the officials originally had charged Mesa was waved off for whatever reason. So 
They still have two timeouts left. And that's going to play very important as we get down to the end of this game, especially if it's close. So let's see if a fourth time is a charm for Aaron Eros. And another flag is down. False start against the kicking team. Well. Well, I'm, I might be premature with my signal there, Jeff Lowry, since the officials are talking it over, but it sure looked like Mesa was moving and there was nobody in the neutral zone for the Avengers. Well, this originally was a 23-yard attempt. If this goes against Mesa, it will be a 33 By the defense, but number 90, caused the offense to react. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Coach, that is the fifth penalty on this series alone against ASA. So they'll move the ball up to the 13-yard line, and it'll be a 23-yard attempt once again. Now the officials will make sure everybody's on the same page. Coach Osavet over there on the far side. Boy, he's not happy. Well, we can I can't, get a shot I can't of blame him, over him there. Jeff Lowry. I can't blame him for not being happy. I, I did not see yes. the ASA player move into the neutral zone. I didn't see it. I mean, he can move, but if he moves into the neutral zone and then the Mesa player reacts to that, then that is on the defense. But I could, from my angle and with the pole here, I was not able to see that that happened. Ooh. Now, Mesa should really be in an unbalanced formation since it's such an angle here. So the, the wide side of the field, they've got a good chance to come off the edge there and block this field goal. Aaron out of Vail, Arizona, attempting a 23-yard field goal, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. And it's 23-21 Mesa with 7.22 left to go. A 23-yard field goal for Aaron Eros and our fourth lead change of the ball game. Well, huge job there by Eros and his uh, special team mates. Uh, excellent snap and hold. That was their best protection of the afternoon, and it puts them up by two. Plenty of time left for the Avengers to come back, but uh, the Avengers have got to keep their composure and eliminate the penalties. The, the penalties have really cost them here late in the game. Uh, some tough calls, but most of them just unwarranted uh, lack of discipline by the Avenger team. So now, Mesa, you got to cover this kick. You know, will you? Will they kick it deep? Will they pooch it? Uh, if they pooch it, you're going to give up big f field position. So, you know, it's a tough decision for uh, Coach Felker when it comes to this kickoff situation. And Morgan had a 94, 96 yard kick return. The last attempt that he had. That last drive coach, 14 plays, 93 yards, eating up almost four and a half minutes of clock. And that's really what the defense needed. Yeah, and there were five penalties on the defense that helped. Yep. Capped off by a 23 yard field goal by Eros. And as expected, a short kick, so I would imagine they'll take the they'll take this kick and start right there. But let's let's see what uh, ASA wants to do here. Yeah, they've got some options here. Mm -hmm. I'd be tempted to make them kick it all over again. Yeah, five yards. Free back. kick out of bounds. That five yard penalty be added to the out of bounds spot. First down, ASA. Well, they'll get it at the forty. Well, the way they, they returned kicks the last few times, I would be tempted to say. Uh, Mesa, why don't you try kicking off one more time? I would tend to agree with you, too. So Mesa comes back out on defense. Led by Aberdeen Finau and Toki. Toki's made some big plays in this game. You got Isaiah Steele, the corner to the bottom of your screen and playing free safety back there. Jordan Robinson, who had a big 70 yard plus interception return earlier in the game and the run defense stepping up to the plate here. How about that? He, Elmondo McCoy Jr., 185 pounder out of Valley Vista High School in the 
Northwest Valley here in the Phoenix area. And I'll tell you what, that's, uh, you know, you get that long rest and the legs feel a little better for at least a few minutes. Yeah, Fee now got great penetration on that play as well, number 44. He's had a really nice game so far in that defensive front for Mesa as well. So they lose a couple of yards on the play. From the 38 on second down and 12. And Lebanowitz, and it's broken up far side. Will Jackson, 6'4", 200 pounder. Uh, Edward Morgan, he had the ball in both of his hands right there, and you're not going to see that young man drop the ball very often, but uh, good throw by Labanowitz, dropped by his top receiver. That's going to bring up a third and 12 for the Avengers. How big is this defensive series for Mesa? They just regained the lead after marching 93 yards downfield, and we're going to get a false start against the offense, and penalties are absolutely Five yard killing. Five-yard still. Third down. Killing the ASA efforts. You know, one of the things, Jeff, and we didn't talk about it much, but it really is the case. Mesa's played a lot of close games all season long, okay? And they got to go down to the wire in those games. When you think about ASA, they've only had a couple of close games. They've had about three or four close games, and the rest have been blowouts. So that experience of playing in tight games and maybe trailing near the end of the game is something that the Avengers haven't had to face very often. And their only loss came 39-38 in double overtime to 18th-ranked Georgia military. Now Lebanowitz is running, and he's got the first down. I love that quarterback, I'm going to tell you. He is such a heady, heady football player. He has great instincts. He sees the coverage. He recognizes that there was... The rush had gone past him, and he steps up and does a beautiful job of finding the first down marker and doing what it took to get that first down. So first and 10 from the 47. That's a 20-yard run. And now a quick screen out to Gill, and he had nowhere to go, and that was McCoy again making the play on defense for Mesa. McCoy's really played a nice game as well coming in from his uh, rover position in that Mesa secondary. ASA College Brooklyn Avengers coming out of that Northwest Football Conference, fifth highest scoring in the nation coming into today's game. Here's the quarterback dumping it off to Gill who made the catch behind the 50 and then forges his way downfield not before he's going to be tackled by Pruitt, but he gets the first down on a gain of close to 12 yards. I don't know if our, know if our fans can t sense this, but uh, defenses aren't as fast at this point in the game. They're worn down, and that play there early in the game, Mesa would be coming up and making that tackle for a seven, eight-yard gain. Instead, he got about 12. Quick pass, complete to the near hash marks, and he breaks it loose. Gill is into the end zone. Tremendous yards after the catch, 23 yards after the catch. And with 5-13, our fifth lead change. And ASA has taken the lead, 27-23. Well, that's a great response by the ASA College Brooklyn offense. They just put that drive together. The key player, obviously the quarterback, Labanowitz, making key plays and key throws and they drive right down the field and retake the lead with a little over five minutes to go. Extra point attempt by de Blasi. Kick is up and good. So with five, 13 left to play in regulation, 28-23 is our score. This is MT MC TV Sports. Hello everyone, I'm Drew Wompy with MC TV Sports. The Mesa Thunderbirds are coming off of last year's win in the Valley of the Sun Bowl. Join me each week when I report the highlights of the Thunderbirds from around the Valley. Can Mesa meet the challenges each year on offense and defense against their rivals? Catch all the great passes and breaking tackles on their way to the end zone. MCTV Sports has the action right here on Maricopa Gridiron. My name's William Parker. I'm six years old and I want to be a fireman. Veterinarian. 
Be a ballerina too. Veterinarian. Hello. Thirteen left to go, and right as we were taking a break, uh, again the players started to uh, mix it up a little bit, and we have offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct call so we're awaiting the ensuing kickoff here as the Mesa Thunderbirds playing in their ninth Valley of the Sun Bowl last year defeated Lackawanna in one of the one of the great Valley of the Sun Bowls at least in the 12 years that I've been doing this 48-42 uh, Darius Aguirre of Mesa scored four touchdowns was the most valuable player and we saw one of the great quarterbacks in recent history, Rathan Reisdorf. He was the NJCAA Offensive Player of the Year. Great season last year for Ryan Felker. But right now, the Mesa trails by five. Kind of a similar game to last year. And uh, let's see if they can make the comeback again. We've had five lead changes in the contest. Yeah, I was just going to say that both games featured lead changes. And when you get that back and forth, it really, really causes a lot of stress. Yes. Especially on us coaches as we're trying to make our decisions throughout the game. De Blasi, end over end, a short kick. It is a fair catch. And Jaron Williams made that evident. Did you see the game, the high school game last year, Hamilton and Perry? There were 10, I called the game, 10 lead changes. It was, it was the most incredible game in terms of offense. The final scores, I can't, I can't remember. I think it was like 63-60. It was a defensive struggle. A defensive <laughs> struggle, yes. Well, we thought we might get one of those I, we uh, when we looked at this yep. game. But really, I, I did think that. But I thought the second half, each team would have a difficult time slowing down the offenses because there are so many explosive players all right let's see if lopez can come back out and he does with roberts and roberts gains about seven the ball squirts loose at the end of the play but his knee was clearly down and i'll put him in a second and short yardage situation here with 458 on the clock you know this is where mesa would love to just be able to grind it out and keep that ball for a while and, and score and take the lead snap goes and again TJ on the left side, and TJ's up to the midfield stripe. First down. Well, you got to give credit to that offensive line for the Thunderbirds. Michael Young, Brad Kleitsch, Naz Munoz, Luis Aguilar, and Cameron Bergen. They are really starting to get some movement on that defensive front, and uh, we'll see if they stay with the run game here. Not a bad idea. Here's Roberts. Roberts. Gets the edge and then battles one of the top defenders on the field in Baysmore and gains five after the attack was made near the 49 and it should have been maybe a two-yard pickup. Well, they had an inside blitz on that time and a great job by the offensive line of picking up those blitzers and Roberts was get, able to get to the edge of the defense and grind out a five-yard gain. And He's a little banged up, a little tired after that last run and his backup cross is in the game. Lopez, who was 14 of 17 for 128 yards, throwing in the first half, and he hands off. They give the ball to Cross, 215 pounder, played for Mountain Point, one of the top programs in the 6A level here in the state of Arizona. Third and two, huge play in the game. Can ASA make a stop here on defense with 3.37 left to go in regulation time? Cross off tackle or uh, over the left side. He's got the first down. And he's battling all the way down to the 33-yard line. A pickup of 10. Mesa has a fresh set of downs with two timeouts left, trailing by five. Well, late in these games, especially a hot day here in Arizona, uh, the defense is getting worn down. It's more and more difficult to come up with a stop. Demetrius Powell on the tackle for ASA. First down and 10. The give goes back to Cross. Cross weaving his way through the secondary, and he's out of bounds, close to the line to gain. 
You know, I like these fresh legs that Cross is featuring here. Uh, he's built low to the ground, and he's doing a nice job of keeping those pads down and running through tackles. So the second timeout taken by ASA. They lead by five. 3.09 left to go here. You're watching the 37th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl on MCTV Sports. Oh, emojis. I thought the conversation just got dumber. Ugh, internet trolls, just ignore them. I like you just the way you are. I believe in you. She's a hugger, give her a squeeze. <laughs> How about the hand? Ah, there you go. Thanks, mate. You're killing it, Jane! All right, we're back here at John Briggs Stadium on the campus of Mesa Community College, and what a game we have seen here today. Mesa, the host team in the red. They have the ball, but they trail by five with 3.09 left to go here in regulation time in this 37th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. So second down and three after a seven yard run with the fresh legs of Tyreek Cross. They come back to the run and they go back to their leading rusher this year and he's gonna be stopped cold, Terrence Roberts. That play just took too long to develop. Well, it did, and I, did, I didn't like the formation they used to run that play. When they run that wide uh, sweep play, they've been using a lead blocker with a motion man most of the time or a third receiver lined up to that side to try to get to the edge, and they were in a two-slot formation, which didn't give them that extra blocker. So now third down and four. Good job by Powell on that last play along with Paul Sanchez. 2.30 on the clock. Big third down and three. Back to pass, and Lopez throws it away. Well, a diving attempt over on the far side by Sonny Richardson, who leads all receivers with 11 catches. That'll stop the clock, Coach, with two minutes and 27 seconds. And Mesa, even though they got two timeouts left, this could be the game. Yeah, they're down five, so obviously they're going to be going for it. They need to keep this drive alive to get that chance at a touchdown. Lopez second in the nation in touchdowns coming in. This team sixth in yards and very wisely Mesa calling a timeout here even though you would like to keep that timeout in case you don't make it here but I mean this this may very well be the game right here. Uh, Coach Felker I think saw what I saw uh, the secondary for the Avengers was showing blitz. They were tightening up on their coverages. The linebackers were a little tighter, and I think he didn't like his play call against the defensive alignment. So we'll see if he changes up either a formation or, or the play call. Obviously, we don't know what play he had in mind on the previous situation, but uh, this is a huge play. It's not the end of the game. Their defense conceivably could stop them, but they only have one timeout remaining. So this will probably uh, be the key moment to determine if Mesa can come back and win this game. So the line of scrimmage at the 26, the line to gain is the 23 yard line. And if you're wondering if Christian Lopez might take off with it, it would have to be a gaping hole for him to do it because he has been hit for negative yards on the ground. So fourth and three, and they dump it off over the middle, a nice crossing route, and that's a first down. Good fall protection after the catch by Dayton Jackson. Well, they had time. That was the key to that play. That's a drag route coming all the way across the formation. The offensive line did a really nice job picking up the four-man rush, and uh, he was able to get that ball to Jackson. Now the quarterback calls his own number and he gets it down close to the 10. Well, the ideal situation for these Thunderbirds is they run that clock and score. ASA is going, are they using their last timeout here or is this an official's timeout? It's an official's timeout. Okay. Baysmore was down and they uh, having him come off the field. So second down and six. And they're they don't. resetting the play clock. So there's still 40 seconds on the play clock. So they can run it down here. Well, it's a quick snap, and they go back to Roberts. Roberts caught in the backfield, and down he goes. I'll tell you, that was a fine read by Malachi Timberlake. 
Yeah, yeah, Timberlake Lake broke through. He read that sweep, and that's been the key play for them all, all this second half is running the sweep. But, again, I didn't like the formation they ran it from. I much prefer them running with a lead blocker, either coming with that slot motion or to the tight end side. So the ball is resting at the nine. He actually gained a yard. It looked like he was going to lose clearly. They don't have to score to get a first down. Back to pass. Lopez in trouble on the blitz. He throws into the corner of the end zone, and it's incomplete. Carter McCarthy, I thought he was going to make a tremendous catch. I guess Mike Caratanuto remembers when his beloved Dallas Cowboys lost in the conference finals back in 81, and Joe Montana made a similar throw. Uh, great play by Timberlake, Malachi Timberlake. He was beat by a step on the coverage, but he kept playing and he knocked the ball loose just as the receiver was trying to bring it into his body. So it all comes down to this with 1.12 left to play. Mesa facing fourth and five. Everybody's heart racing here, and Mesa will call the timeout. Timeout. Or check that. Mesa, that's her third and final timeout. That'll be Ryan Felker's final timeout with one minute and 12 seconds left to play. Well, Jeff Lowry, if they stay in an empty backfield set, they're going to throw a quick pass. They will throw either the slant or the fade route or maybe a back shoulder fade. One, one of those three routes is what I predict is most likely to happen if they stay in an empty backfield set. Now, if they move to a single back set, that gives them an extra blocker, and now we might have more of a double move type of play, like a post corner route or slant to the, and corner route, something of that nature. But uh, uh, he likes to go empty in this situation. I think it's a good call. You're going to force man coverage most likely, and it's just a matter, can your receiver beat the man coverage? And our man Lopez hit, hit him in the place where he can make the reception and, and coach you got to remember another thing here you don't have to score I mean you got a minute and 12 seconds left to go if you can at least get that first down that's, a, that's an excellent point that's an excellent point they don't have to score they got to get to what is it just inside the five it looks like to get the first down well, the line to gain like coach said right there inside the five yard line Game on the line for Mesa, trailing 28-23. You're watching the 37th annual Valley of the Sun Bowl. Here's the snap, here's Lopez, flushed out of the pocket. He's got time, he throws, and it's broken up incomplete. And a game-saving play, the bat away, it's Malachi Timberlake, two plays in a row. Yeah, Timberlake did a great job on that play, staying in coverage and uh, Knocked that ball away just as it was getting near the receiver. There is a penalty marker right at the four-yard line. It was post-play. It was after the play was over. Probably another unsportsmanlike conduct call. Stay with us. We'll have our coverage of the post-game festivities and the presentation of the trophy. So well, Let me go back to that last play. The reason I said if they go empty, it's going to be a... a After well, the play was over, fishing. dead ball on sportsmanlike conduct number 90, on sportsmanlike conduct number 7, both removing their helmets on the field of play. Those, those fouls will be enforced half the distance to the goal. First down, ASA. Well, since they were in an empty backfield set, you don't have that running back to pick up a blitzing linebacker. They brought a linebacker. He's one, the guy that got through there forced early pressure. You can't have a long running play if you don't have enough protectors in there. So uh, I think they, you know, needed needed to, if they're going empty in that situation, you got to have a play where you're throwing quickly on the slant or the fade. Uh, but that wasn't the play that was designed, and unfortunately for the Thunderbirds, it looks like they're not going to well, be able to. Well, with the penalties though, this thing isn't quite over yet because now they're going to start this drive from their own two-yard line, but they they only need to snap the ball twice to run out the clock. Quarterback's going under center, which he hadn't all game long. And now you're going to be half the distance to the goal. It looked like clearly ASA 
offense, number 25. So now they're going to be at the one yard line, and now the concern is you can't afford to get a safety. You give up two points, and then you've got to punt the ball away back to Mesa. Yeah, if you give up two points, now they're within a field goal of tying the game and putting it into overtime. And anything can happen right here. So first down, and we got another penalty. ASA is going to watch on, on, this on, game on. on film at length for a long time. And I don't think Coach Osovet's going to have a voice left no. at the end of this game. I, I'm hearing him all the way from up here, from the far sideline. Offside. No, that hurts. That hurts Mesa. That puts down. him back to the two. So, Which, so that was the same situation we had earlier no, no, in reverse. Right. The, at, the at, Mesa defender went into the neutral zone, which forced the offensive player uh, for ASA to move. That really hurts because it almost takes you out of that safety area. Right. And now they just shoot themselves in the foot again. Big 74 jumping offside. And now we go back to the two and a half yard line. I've never seen anything like it. So now Mesa with new life from the two and a half yard line, right around the three, closer to the three, and they'll just run a quarterback dive and try to just hold on to that ball, ball security. And Unless they uh, fumble the ball here, ASA is going to win this ball game if they turn the ball over. That play clock, they can run that one down to about 20 seconds. Yeah, all they got to do at this point is execute the snap and the kneel down one more time, and this game is over. Coach, is that as easy of a play as it looks? It should be. <laughs> and this should do it. Well, Mesa getting in there quickly. It's got to be a high-stress situation for any quarterback. And the ASA College Avengers out of Brooklyn, New York. They don't have to snap the ball anymore, and they are going to win the 2017 Valley of the Sun Bowl, their first bowl victory in school history. And they do it over the Mesa Thunderbirds by a final score of 28-23. We have been truly treated to a, a sensational game. It wasn't the cleanest game. We've seen a lot of late penalties, a lot of penalties in this second half. But Coach Osafet and the ASA Avengers, congratulations, your 2017 Valley of the Sun Bowl champions. Well, the thing they did better than anything, Jeff, is they showed uh, great resiliency that fourth quarter. You know, they, they could have <laughs> folded the tent, and they came back with the drive they needed and went down and scored. And stay, fourth. stay with us. We'll be back on MCTV with our postgame coverage in just a moment. Hey everyone, I'm Mike Caratanuto with MCTV Sports, and I'm back for another exciting season of Maricopa Gridiron. Tune in every week to see game highlights and the final scores from Mesa, Scottsdale, Glendale, and Phoenix College. From the season opening kickoff to the final seconds of the Valley of the Sun Bowl, we'll have the best plays right from the sideline. Don't miss the action all season long with Maricopa Gridiron on MCTV Sports. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. I learned how to fly, just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. All right, we're back here at Mesa Community College. What a game. The ASA College Brooklyn Avengers win at 28 to 23. A uh, tremendous game. Let's send it down to Mike Caratanudo, who had a turf side view of this entire contest. Yeah, Jeff, I mean, that was a heck of an end to the game there. I mean, Mesa had the opportunity. The fourth down play was standing right 
on the five yard line as that pass ripped by me. And it was just broken up beautifully, uh, like you said, uh, by, by Malachi there, and or Malachi Timberlake. But man, for ASA, I didn't know, again, if the heat would be a disadvantage. You got you and coach talked about it. We saw Brant Casey cramp up. We saw quite a few of their uh, defensive linemen trying to shuffle in and out from ASA. But wow, I mean, again, two uh, great games back-to-back -back years here at Mesa, like you said, Jeff. But yeah. again, not the same result, I think, guess that obviously the Thunderbirds were looking for. But uh, Coach Osvet, man, and his Avengers doing a great job. And what about the uh, game-winning play that came with 5.13 left to go in that fourth quarter to give ASA the 28-23 lead? Uh, Ja'Kai Gill, a great, great catch and run many yards after the catch. Well, he had two key plays in a row. He had the one previous to that to give him a first down, and then he, and then he makes the uh, defender miss on the next play and uh, able to put it in the end zone. Uh, they just said... Uh, Speaking of the Avengers, they have so many outstanding skill athletes that uh, if one doesn't get you, one of the other ones will. And, uh, you know, you look at their statistics before, you know, before the game, and uh, their receivers average 19, 19, 18.8, 14.5, and 14.7 per reception. I mean, those are incredible numbers, and, and that doesn't happen unless you've got very, very talented athletes catching the ball. And, of course, four of their points came on the two blocked extra points that they were able to run back. But, and I had the gut feeling that was going to play into effect here. Yeah, it's a six-point change, Jeff. That's yep. the difference in the game. Yep. Do the math. Take yep. away six, and it's 23-22. Well, actually, you got to add two for Mesa and take away four, and now it's 25-24. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, you got you got to make those extra points. Okay, when we come back, we will have the awards presentation. Again, ASA wins it over Mesa, 28-23, back in a moment. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease, no pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter, but this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. When they test you, stand firm and move only when you hear the seatbelt click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Most party fouls are pretty dumb. Leaving. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. All right, we're back here from Mesa Community College. And let's send it downstairs to Mike Caratanuto. We enjoyed this. Thank you. We appreciate that. All right, back here down on the field as ASA getting the offensive defensive player of the game and the trophy right here. All right. Yeah, I guess. No, turn right here, right here, right here, right here. All right. Coach, obviously, congratulations. You come out here, a little warmer weather in the first half. We talked about it coming out of halftime, though. I mean, that's the special teams play. That, that Big yeah. momentum in the first half for you guys. Anytime you're looking to change momentum in a game, you need a big play. And, uh. This kid came through for us, so kudos to him. Kudos to the team coming out. We needed, we needed something to get us sparked up in the second half, and we need to run the football. We went to the locker and we said we need someone to make one big play. we got to come out and establish a run in the second half. That will open us the ability to throw the football, and we were able to do that. 
Yeah, it's obviously the Mesa defense. I think the line may be getting a little worn down, but the yeah. interceptions, turn, the penalties, I mean, it's tough because you want to run a quick tempo offense too. Yeah. How tough was it with all the penalties? They were talking about it up in the booth just to kind of find that offensive rhythm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's extremely difficult. Anytime you're playing tempo and any kind of circumstance that ruin that, be it a penalty, being a loss, of, uh, a, a run or a pass, a loss of down or a sack, ruins that. So, it, and we and that, that's how we struggled in the first half too. We couldn't get anything going with regards to tempo. Once we get our run game going, it becomes a different deal. Then we get the, then we can put our foot on the gas pedal and go. But kudos to the whole team. I mean, there's plenty of times we came down, we could have lost our composure. We fumbled two times in the red zone. We should have came away with 14 more points. But that's football. Kudos to these guys for playing hard, keeping us in the game, and an offense doing their part just enough to come through and win the football game. Well, Coach, congratulations. We're going to bring this guy in, the offensive player of the game, Edward Moore. Edward, hey, congratulations, man, on the win. Coach talked about the, the offensive spark and needing a spark or anything. Special teams in the first half, I mean, you got to love your boy for returning those for two, but you get the big kick return for a touchdown. What did you see in that play? How did it develop so quickly for you? Green. I seen green. That was all. I just set it up perfect. I knew they were going to block for me. So I just did it. It's God, man. You got to thank God. And, I mean, obviously Mesa defensively, I know you saw him on film. Once you see him on the field pretty quick, what were they doing out there to kind of maybe keep you a little frustrated in the first half? Nothing, really. They couldn't stop us. It was just we making our own mistakes, little mistakes that gave them the uh, power, you feel me? And we came back strong and won it. Valley of the Sun Bowl Champs 2017, how does it feel? Great. I'm going to charge this for life. I promise you I'm going to charge this for life. Well, hey, congratulations. Go celebrate with your team, your family. Look at that offensive uh, player of the game, Edward. Hey, guys, we're going to send it back up to you. Heck of a game here, obviously. And, again, ASA come – Comes all the way across the country, wins the game. Again, a tough game for Mesa, but couldn't ask for a, a better finish, guys. Back up to you. Well, Mike, uh, no question about it. I mean, that 96-yard kick return for touchdown by Morgan came at the early stages of the fourth quarter, Joe, and uh, it, it really turned things around. You know, and I think one other thing we forgot to mention is the fact that uh, Mesa came back on their next possession. Marched down the field 90-some yards, 14 plays, and was held to a field goal. If they go in and punch it in, you never know what would have uh, transpired from there. That was an exciting game. They were yeah. Back and forth, both teams have uh, explosive players. Uh, and it's really difficult to defend them for, for 60 minutes. You know, I haven't, haven't been a defensive coach most of my career. Uh, you just... Yeah, <laughs> you just go crazy trying to figure out what can we do for 60 minutes to hold down these explosive athletes that are in college football now. And and you and you got to tip your hat to the the defense of ASA in the, in the at the very end of the game. It looked like Mesa had the momentum and get had a great chance to punch that ball in uh, late in the game with about a minute to go. And Timberlake, the defensive back, Malachi Timberlake, number eight, comes up with two big plays to knock the ball away and uh, secure the win for the Avengers. And if he doesn't uh, knock down both passes, this would be Mesa celebrating. Mike Aritanuto. Last thing I have, too, is uh, when you look at it, the penalties, and that's why I asked Coach Osfett. And, Coach, I mean, you touched on it, too, just the tempo. Mesa plays with tempo. When I talked to Coach Felker uh, earlier in the week, he was saying, you know, the offense I've gone pretty light with practice-wise, not film study-wise, but practice-wise, because he goes, you give me, you know, five minutes, I could run 55 plays. So it's, I think the penalties, again, in the second half, I know they're moving the ball, but and Lopez seemed a, a teeny bit out of groove to me and a little bit just being down here seeing him because all the penalties, even though some, a lot of them, like you said, Jeff, were going against the Avengers. But I just think, again, for Mesa, just to wrap it up, the tempo, the penalties really killed the tempo to their offense. Well, Mike, you know, they really kind of got away from their tempo game in the second half because their run game was working so well. So they kind of slowed it down a, a little bit and, and used the clock. And, um, you know, I thought it was a good strategy at that point in the game because you didn't want to allow the Avengers to get that ball another time. But uh, it, it was a great football game, you know, exciting to the end. And uh, obviously a lot of great athletes on this field and, and very well coached football teams as well. All right, well, our final score here this afternoon, 28-23, and there they are, the Valley of the Sun Bowl champions of 2017, the ASA College Brooklyn Avengers. So for our entire crew and Joe Kirsting, Mike Caratanuto, Jeff Lowry saying so long from Mesa Community College.